Welcome everyone. We're back to online church, so we thought we would do a little online faith park for you. And, uh, and so we've got a cool little lesson today, and Charlotte is going to lead us in a little song first. What song are you doing first? Um, Born is the King, It's Christmas by Hillsong Worship. Great. All right. Go ahead, Charlotte. Thank you, Charlotte. So we have a little tradition we've been doing at home, and actually Charlotte came up with it. Uh, we want to tell us what we do at home at dinner time. One of the things we do at dinner time. Well, every night we have this thing called the happy jar, and each night um, we either we write something in that makes us happy from the past week, and um, we just write happy things that we've had and what things we're happy about. Let's have a look. You want to pick one? Yep. I'm thankful for the Bible so I can learn. Oh, good. Cool. So we like to share just things we're happy. It's good to try to be happy. This is, this is definitely a, a crazy time of the year with Christmas and all stuff going on. But anyway, so what's the other thing we've been doing at, at dinner with the candles? Um, we've been doing Advent. What, what candles did we light this week, Malcolm? Um, we lighted the candle of hope. Right, we lighted the candle. So what, why is hope important? The hope that the Savior um, that is coming. Right. Jesus is a big deal of that hope, isn't it, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know that the Bible talks all about Jesus coming in the Old Testament? Yes. Yes. Now, do you know how many times it's mentioned that Jesus is coming in the Old Testament? Or stuff about Jesus coming or all that stuff. Do you know how many times? 66. Something around a thousand. Sixty-six. No, it's not quite a thousand. It's, it's, not, it's more than sixty-six. Sixty-seven? <laughs> it's, it's, it's over, it's over three hundred. The, the, the list I have is over three hundred. I'm sure that some people say there's more, some people say there's less. But there's three hundred, over three hundred things. Something like uh, the, the Old Testament tells us uh, basically the time of his birth. It says that he'll be born in Bethlehem, that he would be born of a virgin, uh, that he would be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. All that stuff. It's so cool, right? Uh, that he'd be mocked, crucified. This lo it goes on and on and on. Now, uh, the probability of this stuff happening by accident is fairly crazy, though, right? Yeah. Right? So if you have an odds of 1 in 10 of winning something, that means that you have... Uh, out of, if 10 people entered, you would have one chance, right? So there's how many prophecies did we say? There's over? 
Over 300. Over 300. Okay. So over 300. So let's say that we did eight. Let's say that Jesus came and he only did eight of the 300. Okay. Mm -hmm. The chance of that being an accident is, is, is very, very high. Just a, a, some random guy would do eight things that were written about in the Old Testament. So just if it's just eight things, there's this guy, his name is Peter W. Stoner. He did the math on this, and he says the chance of those, just eight of them, coming true is like one uh, with, uh, or ten with 17 zeros behind it. Ten with 17 zeros. So let's draw that out here, okay? So let's go ten, and you guys count. One... Isn't that a look how long that number is? Is that right? Okay, so that's a huge number. Okay, thanks, Charlotte. That's a huge, huge number. So that is an astronomically... Another way to explain this, if we took the province of Ontario, Ontario is very big, right? Huge on province. Okay, if we took Ontario and we had quarters and we filled Ontario with quarters a foot and a half deep. So that's like that deep with quarters. All oh, of Ontario, right. all Ontario. Then we took one quarter and marked it red. Okay, and then we told you or George or whoever to go in, we'll give you a blindfold, and the first quarter you picked up would be the red one. That would be the chance of that. Does that sound crazy? Yeah. yeah. You think you could do that? No. We, I got a little illustration to try with you here. Okay. So, we'll bring this over here. So, I have got some packing peanuts. Okay, so let's fill them in the bucket. Okay. They look like S's. Yes, and look, I've got more packing peanuts. Okay? So now this is not two and a half feet deep all over Ontario. So this is not the same as that. But I'm gonna take I'm gonna take one. I'm gonna take one and I'm gonna I'm gonna make it red. Sort of. Well, it's red. You can see that it's red. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I close your eyes, guys. Okay. Okay, so I put it in there. Okay, I'm gonna blindfold you, Charlotte, and, I'm, and you've got one chance to get it. See if you are good at getting that one chance. Okay, so reach in, see if you can find it. Just pull one out. You pulled three out, but okay, you got one. Okay. You didn't get it, okay. Let's let Malcolm try to see. See, I'll like show the people on the screen. This is our big bucket of packing peanuts. So let's put this on you. Okay, let's see if you can get it, Malcolm. Okay. I'm just going to hold it because you have glasses on. Reach in there. See if you can, by chance, get it. Just pull one out. Okay. Did you get it? No. So, do you think that the, all those Bible verses... Just a second. Just a second. Where is it? Okay. So, the idea here is, is that it's not by chance that Jesus came and, and did those things. It was, it was an amazing thing that God planned and fulfilled. So I want to read you some of these things that the Old Testament talks about, okay? So Isaiah 9, which is right here on the board, okay? For a child is born, to us the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called, was it wonderful? Wonderful Counselor. Counselor. <laughs> Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, okay? So that's one in Isaiah that talks about that, okay? Um... Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great verse in Isaiah that talks about that. And um, in Luke 1, 32 and 43, it says, He will be very great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. So this is, this is what the Old Testament verse we read there. This is it in the New Te in Testament when it came true. When he will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High, the Lord of God, and the throne will be... Uh, and give him the throne of the ancestor David. He will reign forever. His kingdom will never end. Okay? So that's one. There's another one here in Micah. Okay? Micah 5, verse 2. Okay? And so this one tells us 
where he will be born. Okay? But you, O Bethlehem, Ephraim, only a small village in Judah, yet a ruler of Israel will come from you, one whose origins are from the distant past. So where was Jesus born in the New Testament? Yep. Bethlehem, right? Bethlehem, Bethlehem right? So let's go to yep. Isaiah now. Okay, chapter 7. Okay, so um, verse 14. Uh, it says, All right then, the Lord himself will choose the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Okay, so how, who is the Savior to be born from? Mary. Mary. And was, was Mary married and was she, was she a virgin? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so, and there's another one in, in Zechariah chapter 9. Okay, and it says, Rejoice greatly, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey. 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 Why do you know it was donkey? Because it was a donkey. Because yeah, what did what did he ride into the into Jerusalem on? A donkey. a donkey, right? Even a donkey's colt. It gets specific, and that happened in Matthew twenty-one, just before he was crucified. So the Old Testament talks about all sorts of things that have to do with Jesus, and Jesus came and he fulfilled them. And again, the chances of that happening are, are so crazy that it was not an accident. God planned all this cool stuff. So what can we learn about this? I like in Galatians chapter 4, where it tells us a little bit about this, okay? In Galatians, Galatians 4, okay, verses 4 and 5, it says, uh, But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law, so that we could be adopted into his very own children, into his own, own family. So what does that say? When did God come? At the um, very right time. time. Okay, and why did he come? To, to save us all. Right, to buy us freedom. This is what Christmas is all about. This is why we have hope. This is why we light the hope candle, because he came, like the Old Testament said, he came, fulfilled all these prophecies, did this stuff in the only way that God can do, so that we will know that it was God. Okay, and he gives us hope. This Christmas, let's not forget about what the meaning of Christmas is, to celebrate Christ. Let's have fun with our families. Let's be safe. Do all those things. But let's remember that Christ came in such an amazing way just for us. Thanks, everybody, very much. We will hopefully see you in person soon, but we'll be back here next week doing another one for you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Where is it? See, they can't even find it when they're purposely looking for it. Don't, don't, don't them out. Where did it go? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, hold this up so I can look deeper. Nope. So it really was a miracle, wasn't it, that God came <laughs> yes. and did it all? Yeah. Right? Not just an accident. It was something that God wait. planned so hey, we can look, see how look, amazing look. he is. Look over here. We finally <laughs> found it. It took forever. And uh, it got ripped. And it was the second day. So it was in there. So I wasn't cheating you guys. Where's the other hat?